matches with our scene. So now we have a dirt charge followed by a large explosion and uh, you know we can time these elements together. Now another key thing to be thinking about with the action essential elements is the speed of the clips. So in this case the dirt explosion is almost slow motion so what we can do is change the speed by selecting the clip, come up here to layer, go to time and we can choose time stretch and we have this dialog that comes up and the stretch factor works like this if we set it to 200 the clip will be twice as long so it'll actually go in slow motion but if we set it to 50 percent it'll be half the original speed and it'll be a lot faster so maybe we'll set it to 75 and hit OK but it's good to use round numbers like 25, 50, 75 so we'll hit OK so that goes off I can trim the top of the clip so I don't want to see that fire yet so we can just come right here and shrink the end of the clip so that we just see the initial blast and it's like BAM it's on so that looks good then we have the fireball that comes right after it maybe somebody left a briefcase bomb and it's blowing up who knows I'll let you guys write the story so we'll turn our footage back on and uh, it's looking pretty good. Now I want to add this big glow so it seems really bright. So we'll create a new adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is kind of a layer that applies all of the settings to everything that's beneath it. So if I were to add a color correction, it would color correct all of my layers. In this case I'm going to choose Effect, Stylize, and it may be off my screen but we're looking for Glow. So here we have the Glow effect. We have the radius and the intensity. So if we come about right here, we can turn the radius up and we just add this really big, powerful glow. Now it's looking a bit yellow, so let's change the colors to something a little bit more neutral. So maybe something tan and maybe something a little bit more reddish. And then instead of using the original colors, we're going to use the A, B colors from below here. So that's looking a little bit better. We can turn up the intensity of the glow here, and it's really starting to blend our scene. So he's running away, and he jumps, and uh, it's looking good. Now, other fun things you can do is maybe duplicate our fire. So we could choose Edit, Duplicate. We could offset the time of it, and maybe scale it up and change the transfer mode to add which is going to be really bright and we can maybe move it down but I'm basically just adding more layers just to try to make this a little bit more exciting and uh, a little bit more dangerous I guess. Now another important tip is changing the length of your composition so we can do that by coming up here to composition comp settings and here we have a bunch of different settings we can change the duration which is currently at frames for me but it may be seconds for you so you can just change it to maybe 300 or 10 seconds and we'll hit OK and then if we pull out so we can hit this button here and maybe extend our background over and then our explosion will kind of go away and we have some empty time now another element I used was this big dust blast which is really cool we put that in here time it up and it just gives all of the explosion you know another layer of, of sort of dust in the room maybe put it beneath we can even lower the opacity by hitting T or just come down here to the transform settings and turning the opacity down to about 50 percent so that way we just see a little bit of smoke after this massive explosion now if you want to play it back while you're working on it, we need to render it into the RAM preview. So we have our RAM preview controls here. I like to change the resolution to half and sometimes skip one frame and it just makes it go a little bit faster. But if you click on this far button, this will start the RAM preview or you can just hit zero on the number keypad. Now you can wait for it to finish rendering or just tap zero for it to start playing back. And
and then we can see it in real time. Once we get it the way we want, we can trim the comp. So if we take this, slide it over, right click, choose trim comp to work area. And so now we just have this region selected. So I can render this out for maybe my editing application. And we can do that by choosing composition, add to render queue. And the render queue is where everything gets rendered from. So normally I want to have it set at best. And then we'll change the output module. We can click here. I like to use QuickTime. And we can go into the format. And I also like to use Photo JPEG at about 95% or so. We can hit OK. If we have audio, we can include the audio. Otherwise, we can just leave it off and do the audio later. We can hit OK. Set the output destination. So if we click here, we can uh, just name the file. click save and then just click the render button and our scene will get rendered out and that QuickTime movie can then be imported into your editing application or you know shown to your friends all that good stuff now you can check out my site at videocopilot.net for some more advanced tutorials and I hope this helps you out my name is Andrew Kramer and we'll see you next time